Voyage and Voyage is the ship for you. In this video, we're going to talk about the differences between what Virgin Voyages is doing on the Scarlet Lady and other cruise lines that you might be more familiar with. Because vacation time is precious and you don't want to spend time on a ship that wouldn't make you happy. And there are a number of differences from normal traditional cruising that we found on Virgin Voyages. I'm Charlene and this is Sam and we are Island Dipper Dot Travel. So let's go over a few things so that you can choose what's right for you. First up, ship design. So this is a smaller ship, um, kind of like Radiance class, Sunshine class, depending on what cruise line you're familiar with, or I think it's equivalent to the Sapphire, Diamond, and the Princess line. So it's a smaller ship. Much smaller than uh, the last ones that we've been on. It uh, is a nice size though. It's uh, comfortable, you can find your way around a lot more easily than you can on some of the bigger ships. Although I will say it's designed in a way that makes, sometimes it's a little bit tricky because there aren't paths that go from stern to aft all in one run on every single floor. Sometimes there'll be a restaurant in the way that will block your way and you'll have to go up a floor in order to get past. Well, we found a floor seven can pretty much get us from end to end. So if we're up and or down and want to go the other way, then we will just go to seven and then make yeah. our crossing. <laughs> when, when in doubt, go to floor seven. And speaking of floor seven, so there's no, um, there's no promenade or Centrum area like there are in a lot of other uh, cruise ships that kind of like cause a lot of people to gap But it's not it doesn't have that big area that you might expect um, And because of that it is challenging sometimes to know where you're supposed to go To do the things you might want to do. Well, the ship is all about discovery and and everything is built that way even that we keep coming back to floor seven but even floor <laughs> seven is separated into distinct er areas neighborhoods whatever zones. you want to call it, zones <laughs> whatever you want to call them but there's uh feelings to the to where you are there's a different feeling to sip than there is from the gaming area for instance yeah. and, and from the wake those those kinds of spaces each have their own feel um, so you know when you're, you kind of know when you've moved through a section to another section because it just is different in, in um, design, decor, um, the things that are going on there, those kinds of things. Yeah, the things that they tend to put there. And, and there are things like there's um, what they call like the social club and, and it's got, um, in addition to the video games and foosball and air hockey and all, all of that free. is free, <laughs> um, they also actually have this big treasure trove of game games and they have game time and they open that up and people will play games, play card games. Play. It's been very popular. Um, yeah, been super popular. I was really kind of surprised by that. Um, but there, there are a lot of little different nooks and crannies to go either hang out, um, if you want to, you know, be around people or you want to kind of have some chill time. Um, there's a bunch of different really distinct places and you'll kind of, you know, once you walk around, you'll get your feel for like where you like to go. It's like, I really like the dock. I could like live out there, I think. Um, cause that was kind of like to my taste, but I see people gathered in, in all the different spots and, <laughs> and there were these big, uh, and I saw people talking about it before the ship launched that there were these big bed looking things and areas that you're going to, who would use this? What would you use this for? They were always <laughs> occupied. Always somebody in, in these big <laughs> bed things. So, uh, you know, it works. Yeah. And then we found that there's a spot out of the dock and even on Richard's rooftop that have pseudo bed kind of areas that we've lounged about in. So the ship design is is quite a bit different. Uh, the venues for the shows, or I'm going to talk more about the entertainment, but the venues for the shows are much smaller than maybe some of the, um, you know, bigger, bigger ships where they've got basically one big theater and all the things happen in that theater. So that brings us to entertainment. So a lot of things about uh, Virgin Voyages to me seems to be either a little bit or a lot different than traditional cruising. And entertainment is the one that's like a lot of it. Um, there's <laughs> the entertainment is 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 very different. It's very avant-garde. Uh, it is adult um, and a little salty, a little cheeky. I think that's, I'm using che that word. Cheeky is right. Cheeky, I think, I think that's how I'm using that word correctly. Uh, someone correct me down below if I'm not using cheeky correctly. Um, and don't be cheeky. Um, but the entertainment is, um, there are some traditional things. You know, there's like, you know, the guy with the guitar and there's, there's a blues band that's on right now. Although the guy with the guitar doesn't do the kinds of things I've seen the guy, 
guy with the guitar do on other cruise lines? Other cruise lines, there's a guy with a guitar that sings songs that are bass sings, that sort of thing. Yeah. These are more performers that are singing either their own their own stuff or they're yeah. singing stuff that isn't necessarily group participation, but uh, it's right. interesting and fun. Right, right. I think they've gone out and hired, they tried to hire like slightly different professionals that do it's not the house band that you see on the ship and you'll see them on the, all the different venues and they'll just kind of float around. These are guys that are doing that out there in the industry. Um, there's a funk band and they're pretty awesome and they have performed in a bunch of different places. They say there's a blues band and one night we uh, ended up in the middle of a kind of a jam session, I guess. I accidentally stumbled across it. The, ba the funk band had finished their set and gone over to the blues guy and ended up sharing his set a little bit so uh so and that was really cool um and um there's also like um the hostess and she has like this amazing voice and she'll do more uh traditional song sets that you would, would be more familiar with what you're used to on a cruise ship so it's sort of the the more observational sort of uh, yes. where you would sit in the Good audience point. and watch yes. somebody yes yeah. yes and then there's not that so uh, there's uh, kind of a, uh, most of the shows kind of require like a little bit or a lot of participation. There's like this little- To, to your comfort level. You, you don't have to participate if you don't want to. That is, that is correct. So there's a dance party and um, you stand for that one. The stages move, the performers move. There's, um, you know, videos and things that are playing. We heard as we were leaving that, how do I describe that? People just don't know how to say what it was, and I don't at this point don't know how exactly to describe. You did a pretty good job there, but well, you said street dancing, so yeah. I, maybe that's what it is, kind of. Um, but but really fun, and uh, you can dance, you can sing with along with them or not. You know um, that that was okay too. So that was like one thing, and then we had a dual reality, and I think a lot of people have been talking about dual reality. So it's it's like a spin on Romeo and Juliet, um, but it's really. Um, acrobatic dancing storytelling yeah. thing but it does actually <laughs> end up in a story and and one of the things I've noticed is they take a lot of songs that you're familiar with and they've like redone them um, to change the tempo or something to match like whatever the show is so it's familiar but not familiar yeah like familiar so but intriguing yeah yeah so and I you know I mean I guess what would you expect from Virgin right no no less than that um, and then there's this thing uh, never sleep alone uh, and that is very adult. If you're squeamish at all, don't go to that one. Um, it's not, it is an adult show. Um, there'll be really things asked of you and it has some participatory things and you don't have to participate. Well, when you have gifts you can take away, there are condoms that you can take away with you. So and, and if, if you feel like being given condoms and masks as party favors is a bad thing, probably don't go to that show. Right. Or and maybe this cruise line. Or, yeah, and, and I think just in general, the the entertainment has been um, less, just not traditional, um, has been adult. And then we ended up in the switch of, uh, we had, because uh, we're in a back-to-back, -back, one, uh, our first one, we had this, like, mentalist, and he was one of those guys where he's like, you know, give me a number and then I'll tell you what you know, line that is from Shakespeare, or whatever, and ridiculous things like that, and then like Rubik's Cube, oh my god, the kind of impressive actually, the Rubik's Cube stuff, but, um, and then like he, he, that was his last time on the ship, uh, his contract was up, and then the, so the second one, uh, is, was like a comedy what, what's singing? A co co comedy show telling, <laughs> storytelling sort of thing, she's just doing experiential type of observations about her life and yeah. doing songs about them. And how to make grandma yeah. happy. Yeah. Um, so that sort of thing. But again, a salty, um, um, some adult language and that sort of thing and just not what you would traditionally see. You know, um, I guess maybe some of the the later night on like, I know Carnival and Royal Caribbean have like comedians and the, the later shows, more like that, but we're probably turned up a notch. Yeah, yeah, I think think of that. If you're used to the normal cruise lines and you like that late night comedy show, you'll have that most of the time. Most of the shows will have at least an element of that in them. But, um, and this will transition us over to the food portion of this review, but if Lick Me Till Ice Cream makes you feel a little uncomfortable, then this probably isn't the cruise line for you. Because it is all a little adult. Um, 
around the ship. Um, and Because it's all adults, right? Everybody here is over 18 and most people are over 21. So it is an adult ship. Um, but let's go to food. Food has been extraordinary. The food has been better than, um, well, we normally will get the food packages. We'll go and have the specialty restaurants, try each of the specialty restaurants and most of the cruises that we go on. Um, and just because this is divided into basically specialty restaurants as your main places to eat, right. um, the food has been spectacular. It's all been it's all been really good, with a couple of notable exceptions. There's a couple of dishes, not the whole restaurant, but a couple right. of dishes. They didn't <laughs> quite hit exactly right on to our tastes. Now maybe they're to your tastes. I don't know, but for us, there were a couple of misses. So I'm. I, in my humble opinion, uh, don't order the shrimp, shrimp and grits at the wake. It was... Um, I think you described it as a crime against humanity. Uh, I, that, and it was um, crunchy and more tomatoes than I've ever had in a shrimp and grits ever. Um, so I think that just, maybe that just was missed. Um, but other things from the wake have been uh, fantastic. And the sh all of the restaurants are themed and they all have their own kitchens and their own chef and so unlike ships that you go on that everything tastes very similar it's even if you're doing theme, yeah. yeah if you're doing a especially restaurant you still get a lot of the same flavors um these are all very different and very distinct to that particular restaurant um a bad thing is though in a five uh, night cruise you don't have time to go yeah. to every one and yeah. that that's sad um and we're really glad <laughs> it is sad that, that makes uh which we were really glad that we were able to do a back-to-back -back because we actually did get to hit all of the restaurants once and a couple of them we were able to go back twice and it's it's a you know there's like pink agave which is mexican but it's very upscale mexican and there's uh korean barbecue and there's um okay. Gumbe and um and everything and many things in between so if you're a foodie definitely give this consideration because I think that it does food better like even it's not great food and, and you're probably than your good food on some of your other lines yeah you're probably gonna have something that you're gonna be sad you're not gonna get to go back and have more of because there that's what I've discovered with the restaurants there are a few things that I've had I go wow I really like that but I'm not gonna have time to get back to it. I'm not gonna be hungry enough to be able to go back and eat <laughs> yeah, that again exactly um, and there's only there's two restaurants um, that do like breakfast brunch and dinner uh, and that's the razzle dazzle and the wake and um, they do have some times that they're closed um, like probably because they're resetting up um, and then everything else like is mostly just like a dinner and then there's the galley has um, which is great yeah the galley is like excellent and I could have eaten up there every day not known any better you know which I guess you could say that it's sort of like any of the food courts that you might have on you know uh, the, any of the other lines um, I guess it's the analog to the main dining although not quite the same yeah, yeah. so what, what they're doing now because of uh, the, the COVID restrictions are you sit down um, and you do your QR code and then then somebody will come up to you and you'll just order and you could order from the different areas like one day I had tacos and I don't remember what you had yeah something else so um, and then like the tacos are S sushi I've had a couple times because you won't eat sushi because sushi, I'm not a big sushi <laughs> fan and there's like sushi's like already stuff in like a little bento box you can grab and go and they have some grab and go stuff that's like just in little reusable boxes and you can grab it and take it wherever you want to go there's like say the galley we wandered off with some stuff and had it on our patio they have awesome um, cookies uh amazing chocolate chip cookies like the best chocolate chip cookie i've ever had on a cruise ship and it on to be honest like the bakery is outstanding i can't really say enough about the food because a lot of times when i go on uh, a cruise ship i'll see stuff and it looks amazing and then you'll get it and it's kind of like a disappointment because it just doesn't live up to the, what it looks i haven't had anything that wasn't fantastic you should do a whole video on food i will i will do a whole video on food so like and subscribe and stuff so that you can get that <laughs> so that you know when I do it and stuff um, so the food was great now here's the downside though to the food you pretty much gotta go to your app and make a reservation for like everything otherwise you're gonna have to stand in line and hope you get uh, learn, learn to love your app um, yeah. and, and I know that's a little bit different than a lot of cruises that's another little change that's different on other cruises, I would put my phone in the safe and never use it during the whole cruise. Yeah. Um, or just use it for pictures, you know, take pictures. Yeah, yeah, I would, yeah, maybe take it out and take pictures. Right. 
Um, but in this one, because the app is so integral to what you're doing and because you're do using QR codes to pull up menus and pull up information about things that you're seeing on the ship and that sort of thing, um, you do live in your phone a little bit more, which has been less weird and intrusive than I thought it was going to be. I kind of didn't think that would work out very well, but uh, yeah, I feel like it did. Although I have heard other <laughs> cruisers that have not been as comfortable with it as I am. So. Right, right. Um, so uh, you need to, it, it was, it's better, I think, if you make a reservation for your, um, for your meals. We also reserved um, in the app, when we got on the ship, the shows we wanted to watch um, in the times. Um, and it also gives you like a, gives you like usually like an hour and a 30 minute warning, which I found to be extraordinarily helpful um, to yeah. like, hey, you've got lunch in an hour or whatever. And I think that's pretty cool. And you can do, you can get your excursion, you can pay for your excursions and set them up through the app. So pretty much you can do everything in the app. And you also need to disembark. You need to set up a disembarking time uh, on the app too. And I'll, I'll probably have a video kind of just about embarking and disembarking because it's a little bit different and I don't I don't know what everybody else is doing now because of lockdown. This is the first cruise that we've been on since uh, the four, before times. So um, Again, this, we did overhear some people who were confused by the disembarkation process. Yeah, because they don't do the typical just throw your luggage out and they'll take it and put it somewhere. They don't do that at all. You have to like pick a time and, and then um, uh, then that, that depend on what you do there will depend on like what happens next. So, and again, I'll, I'll do a whole video on that um, because that's very, I think that one's gonna be different for everybody here too. Okay, what's next? Oh, as you're moving, what's next? The, the what we're still on food, when you order room service, um, which we did for breakfast, uh, pretty much every day I had at least coffee delivered for breakfast. Right. Um, but one of the things that's different with this is that it gets delivered to you and it gets delivered in like a bag instead of the normal trays that you would get in any other place okay. I've ever been in. And I'm pretty sure we got video of that, so we'll, uh, we'll definitely show you. Show you how you get into the in and out of the bag and get food out. It's a pretty cool way to deliver yeah. the food, really, it's, it's after, I, after I got used to what the hell did you just hand me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but in any case, once you're done with it, you leave it in your room. You don't put it back out in the hall. Um, which is something different than what I've seen in others is a bunch yeah. of trays cluttering up a hall. Well, Virgin yeah. doesn't like that. Yeah. You leave it in your room and your and your room attendant will take care of it. Right. They'll, they'll make it go away. And um, and we'll do a whole video on um, our first leg of the back to back. We just did a typical room and then our second leg we're in a suite and we're definitely going to do a video on um, that. Uh, because we have, unlike normally, we align quite a bit with our um, ideas and our opinions of things, but we are very on opposite ends of the sweet versus a regular. Some room. of us are right and some of us are not. <laughs> so we'll see. And then, like, you know, it's really all about what's what's for you. But I think just to kind of like wrap it up for this video, lots of little differences that make a big difference I think at the end it's a much different feel um, it is if you are a traditional cruiser and I've every time we hear somebody complain in a restaurant it's always I'm a I'm a seasoned cruiser and and then yuck yuck complaint. yuck yuck right complaint so caution I caution you seasoned cruisers um, make sure that you're ready for this paradigm shift because it is definitely a little bit or a lot of it different in a lot of different ways and you've got to really come open and um, leave your preconceived notions with the way a ship worked for the other cruise lines uh, when you come here otherwise you're going to be unhappy and that sucks right vacation time is like so small and you want to make you want to maximize it every bit that you can I personally think that this is great for the non cruiser because I think it is so different and a lot of the things that the people don't want to cruise for, uh, this doesn't have. So I, I really think this should bring a lot of people into cruising, at least for Virgin Voyages, that wouldn't consider cruising before. I agree. That part. And that's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, until next time, live your truth and live well.